Hey, Aaron. <clears throat> hey, 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 how is going? <laughs> How is going on? <laughs> oh, it's going. <laughs> How are you? Yeah. I feel like maybe we didn't fill this out the last time we talked. Oh, no. Because uh, this doesn't look right, does it? No. Well, has it been two weeks? Wait. Didn't we meet? When was the last one? It was the ninth, but you were here. Yeah. Oh, I just didn't put my name down. That is the thing. Oh, man. Oh, you're almost there. What? Yeah, there you go. got it. You Excuse got me it. A minute. My dyslexia will catch up. Oh, where do I find this link? It's on the GitHub somewhere, right? Yeah, but let me put it in the chat, too. I can find it. Yeah. Oh, let me. I'm at least going to put this into my invite. I don't know. If I get all the letters in the word, doesn't that count? Yeah. How do I feel about it. 100%. Growth. Growth. Oh my goodness. Okay. This time we're going to get everyone's name. Yeah. Oh, wait. I'm going to do one Is better. Coolio, okay. Let me put this in my calendar invite too. Contributor strategy. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. Yeah. This and following events. I feel bad that we didn't get other people's names listed down. Um, Karen was here. I Josh Burkus was here. Um, Am I spelling this name right? Yeah, you got it. Okay, good. I feel like, was there someone else? Blah, I don't remember. Repos, cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, your, your question about a repo template uh, had us asking all sorts of questions this morning. Ooh. <laughs> because, um, <clears throat> You know, that repository that had been suggested to me is a where we could put the contributing template, mm -hmm. uh, the contributing guide. Um, mm -hmm. Sounds like maybe that's not the right place. So we're now looking at making a new repository that can be a template repository. Oh, cool. You know I mean? Yeah. So I know I said I was going to make a PR and take everything we had worked on and um, put it up there so that we could all a little bit easier to collaborate you know we can do like the normal suggest changes and kind of thing like that yeah um, and other people could add commits and it'd be a little bit easier to collaborate on i think and you're not doing markdown you know? oh i see what you're saying oh yeah, yeah. okay but um it sounds like that's actually not the right repo for it um so i'm working right now to get us a repo created that'll be a repository template Nice. And then okay. when someone wants to, you know, make a new repo that either they're hoping eventually to contribute to the CNCF or it's already kind of a new repo for a CNCF project, um, or they're an existing project and they just want to take one thing like, oh, we're going to, you know, get an issue template. They can just obviously copy it. Um, yeah. It'll just be things that are meant to be copied. Sweet. That's the idea. That's awesome. Yeah. Of course, we're still working it all out, but. Cool. Okay. Um, Let me write that in my notes. Yeah, this is, this is, this is the plan. Um, so this is, let me show you the issue. Interim strategy. We have an issue where we're chatting about We're chatting about it in here. Because um, this is where we initially decided, oh, we would use CNCF Contribute. OK. Um, that's where I had gotten that idea. <laughs> OK. 
first place. Um, and now we're thinking of making another repo. So hopefully this week I should have a repo for us to, to work on. And then we won't have to be doing all this inside of this. Okay. Instead. Oh. We could eventually turn it. Oh, nice. Okay. So <clears throat> you yeah. can put some of the stuff in a website, the website be kind of like how to get started with your new project or something. Yeah. Like, you know what you did with Athens where contributing almost had its own website. It wasn't just like read me that you kind of had to plow through. Yeah. Um, it, it could be because a lot of our guides and things like that, I think they're going to be interlinked and I think we could, if we wanted to make it a static website, uh, yeah. eventually if we were interested, um, okay. obviously it, it will start as just markdown. Yeah. Um, but That's our templates, cool. I loved your idea. Like it should just be a repo that someone can use the GitHub template functionality and yeah. be able to just um, you know, you use this template, be able to yeah. click that green button and just have everything they need to get started with a recommended structure, um, you know, inclusive documents and practices, and they can just start customizing. Nice. That's super cool. Yeah. So otherwise it's onwards and upwards with our contributing. Onwards. I, uh, I s worked this morning on taking more of our optionals and what did I start? I started with, um, uh, yeah, here we go. Yeah. This stuff. So let's just jump into that. This is just kind of hard to track what I've done. And so I'm sorry, this is what we're still doing. Um, That's cool. All right, so first was for ways to contribute. I think a great way to contribute would be attending meetings, mm -hmm. actually. So I wanted to add that. Like, it's your ideas, your designs, your presence, your interactions is um, helpful, I think. Yeah, so, so attending meetings, does that mean... Does that mean lurking or like lurking and then working towards something else or? Oh, that lurking and then working. Um, lurking. Yeah. I mean, let's think about, I mean, that's how I got started in every single SIG I've ever been in. Mm -hmm. I showed up to the SIGs meetings first and I got a, a feel for things. I occasionally shared an opinion. I got to know people and then I would do when, when I wasn't in meetings, I would, I would then try to fill in and do work. Um, mm -hmm. But part of contributing and eventually becoming mm -hmm. a regular contributor and, and working your way up the ladder and feeling a part of a project is that interaction. So it's figuring out where people are and being there too. Mm -hmm. So yeah. one of our items was uh, communication, how to contact us, who to ask for help. Yeah. Right. And so I was thinking about that. Right. So if there is a Slack channel or a dev list, subscribe to the dev list, get in that Slack channel, uh, you know, get into the discuss forum or whatever it is. Yeah. The other piece of it is, is that if there's a regular open dev meeting, um, you know, Athens had that for quite a while. Um, you know, SIGs usually have something like that too. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> up. Probably, um, it'd probably be good to say explicitly, basically what you just said about kind of the the progression from just showing up to the meeting to sharing a few opinions to giving 
like substantive feedback to maybe coming up with your own ideas or opinions or a design doc or something more kind of meaty. So, so maybe just kind of describing that progression from your first meeting to your 10th or something like that. I mean, I do think it's perfectly fine. And, and I've welcomed it when someone has shown up and this is their first time and they share an experience report or things like that. Um, and people have shared like design ideas too. Um, it's just that if you want, I was just sharing one way to do it, which is a, a vague, I want to contribute. I want to just generally be involved and they didn't have a specific agenda, mm -hmm. you know, that um, you don't have to limit yourself to just yeah. engaging with our issue queue. Oh, I you see. can just, <clears throat> show up and um, slowly get to know people yeah. and you don't have to wait to be invited. Oh, like a, I see. The CNC app isn't like that. You don't have to be asked to join our meetings. All of our projects okay. meetings are open. Oh, so maybe it's, it sounds like our, our Slack channels are open. Our dev lists are open. And, and we encourage people to passively engage. And then if they're, if they're interested, speak up, say something, say mm -hmm. hi, you know? Um, so is this more like, we don't expect you to come to the meeting, but we really would like you to come to the meeting and yeah. just have that, that different kind of interaction. Is that what you're Yeah, doing? yeah. Cause I think that um, a lot of, a lot of people I've talked to didn't know that they were welcome. I it felt like they had to be asked. Yeah. And I think it makes a difference to extend an invitation to people who have made it this far into the contributing guide to say, you are welcome. Even if you have nothing to say, show up. Okay. And it's fine to talk if you have something to say or just introduce yourself. Do you mind no, if I We always it? have that usually at most of these meetings or in the Slack channels or in a dev list, just, you know, um, any healthy community that SIG contributor strategy would be saying is a healthy community would welcome this type of interaction with new members. Yeah. Do you um, mind if I write? Please do, because I'm saying a lot, but I'm not quite sure how to maybe make this not be a long rambly paragraph. Yeah. So should I put it under like right here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll put like a sub bullet point. I just want to encourage projects to tell people to come. So like absolutely everyone is come, welcome to come to any yeah. of our weekly meetings. You never need an invite to join us. Um, in fact, we want you to join us even if you don't have anything you feel like you need or you want to contribute. Just being there is enough. A few more notes. You can find out more about our meetings here. Link. Yeah, it's going to be on the, the README is where I think we want to encourage people to put that. Okay. Is um, if they hold meetings, they should link to it on their README. Okay, I'll put um, link to me info in the readme. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, you don't have to show your face. But we hearing... welcome you to introduce yourself. Yeah. Uh, the first time you come, introducing 
yourself is more than enough. And over time, we hope that you feel comfortable um, contributing, uh, let's just say voicing your opinions, giving feedback on others' ideas, and even sharing your own ideas, experience, uh, let's do it experiences and so on yeah i'm um, like that yeah yeah i don't i would think this is its more. own thing not even like us like the whole thing Here, wait let me change this yeah please do i want to pop this out <clears throat> oh wait i not very good at um google docs one second Technology is terrible. Uh, how do I get this out of the bullet point? <laughs> Try. Oh, you got it. Yeah. Come on. Help me out of here. <laughs> what about shift tab? Yeah, that's what I was trying to do. Is, it, go. is it a thing? I, I have no idea. It was kind of a thing, but it wasn't really giving me that all the way there. I yeah. got you. Yeah. Oh, I have an idea. Oh, wait for this. Yeah. Three of them. Is that a thing? Yeah, yeah, it is. I'm move. super proud of myself for three, three, uh, <laughs> uh, three H three or whatever. Yeah, that I'm is. gonna move this ahead of that real quick so that we don't lose that. That needs to go above that. Um, yeah, because I, I I just feel like it's important um, to just say that explicitly yeah for sure you know the only thing i think is i mean this i think this is a good thing for the record but um it's just getting people to put in their time synchronously and i think really the big barrier is getting people to feel comfortable yeah, and the only way people feel comfortable is and this is something that we can do. We let, let me add this as like a to do. Um is I'm sharing my you can do I'm typing. Um yeah. I really like and this may be written up somewhere in Kubernetes before, is how to moderate oh yeah meeting. Yeah. Um so things like uh recognizing someone's hands up oh yeah uh, making sure that quiet people are given yeah. sorry i'm trying to type with one of my fingers bandage up <laughs> oh no um to speak you know all those uh, just various things that uh someone's running the agenda yeah it would be also really, I think it'd be really good to help people feel comfortable if either like there was a link in here to, to the new thing you're writing here and have the link just be like, if you come to the meetings, the moderator will be there to help you along. It's not gonna be a shit show for lack of a better term and you'll have a chance to, you'll, we'll make it a welcoming and comfortable environment. You'll have a chance to speak if you want to. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, this would be a great piece of content that we could write for that repo we're talking about mm -hmm. that maybe gets turned it into website content um, oh, yeah. about how to actually moderate and run a meeting, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then someone could see like this is how we moderate and run our meetings yes you know nice yeah um yeah because sure. this is what made it possible for me to show up to meetings because i have a real hard time you know getting worded edgewise when i feel really new so i love this i i, I would love to encourage more people to to think about doing that, especially in groups where they feel really comfortable. So they're not sure if they need it still, 
And the answer is you always still need it because someone's new. Yeah. Yeah. Even, even if everyone is veteran in the meeting, it's still, I feel like it still can really quickly become a free for all. And then the next time, a lot of times, at least for me, the next time there's just no motivation. Like moderators don't want to moderate. People don't want to risk talking and then getting totally overwhelmed with responses yeah, or, inter or even interrupted or whatever. Yeah. You know, and as we talk about having inclusive meetings, having, uh, having a moderator who's being conscious about these things really helps. Yeah. So that you don't have the same people and the same personalities dominate the meeting. Um, I think it makes Are you, oh, sorry. Yep, oh, that's it. Oh, cool. Um, are you up for writing this how to moderate? Did you, do you wanna write that now or do you wanna let it? I was gonna make yeah. a separate issue and then see who was interested in writing it. I feel like I personally have not moderated many meetings and everything I do know, I've actually just done from what I've seen you do. Yes. Bad idea. Um, so like <laughs> I know some things, right? Uh, you know, having, having someone who's usually not the main talker is the person who should be moderating um, and someone who has enough power, who, who has the right power or authority who can get other people to be quiet when they ask them to, who can mm -hmm. move the, the conversation around, right? Mm -hmm. um, so you don't wanna just give it to the person who can't say no. So there's certain like, like good rules to follow, um, you know, the hand thing and, and things like that. And, and then giving new people a chance to speak and then paying attention to people who may be unmuted and then muted again and are obviously trying to like jump into the conversation. Like there, there's things that I am aware of but I feel like there's more to it. And there's things we could look out for because I'm, I bet some of this has been written already and then we could look yeah. for it and incorporate One it. One thing that I hope would be written somewhere that yeah. I don't know the answer to is if you're a moderator, what do you do if you want to contribute something? Raise your own hand, get in the queue yeah. yourself. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. But that's why <laughs> when I often don't serve as moderator in groups where I, or in meetings where I know that I want to talk a lot mm -hmm. and I will step back and try to get someone else who won't be as active to be the moderator because it's hard to moderate yourself. Yes. This is the same I thing why I won't often be note taker as well, because it's hard to participate when you're trying to type at the same time. Yeah. Um, note taker. These are hard things to juggle because oftentimes it's the same two or three people who are willing to step up and do this. So mm -hmm. these are things though that if we can help provide guidance and think through about how to rotate gentle ways to nudge people to do things. Um, by gentle ways to nudge, I mean how to stand up and not be the person to do it every time. What yes. we really mean, you know, that'd be good. That brings up that chop wood, carry water thing in my mind. Yeah. Like, is there a way to give out some kind of recognition for people who do that? I don't, I have no idea. Just kind Yeah. Of so this brings me back to the contribution ladder. Hmm. These are activities that should be accounted for on the contribution ladder and should matter enough to contribute to real roles on the yeah. project. Is there, okay, that, that right there, what you just said, really, I have feels strong sure. ones on that. Yeah. For the contribution letter, at least what I've seen is like a lot of people rightly, I think, rightly believe that when you rise up higher on the ladder, 
you're expected to do really a lot more advanced technical work and technical leadership. So what I think is personally, what I think is important for people to know is for this project, you're expected to do the, the non-technical stuff more and more and not necessarily the like writing the fancy new algorithm or whatever. And yeah. that would be things like, yeah, taking notes or moderating or writing stuff like writing agendas or whatever it might be. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so what we're looking at with the contribution ladder is it's it's a it's a, a mix of some of it is project governance, and that incorporates things like what it takes to get the project done. Right, and it includes like project management and triage and who makes decisions and bus ties and things like that. But it's also the chop wood, carry water of note taking, running agenda, chairs, and all of the being a chair is not a glamorous role, you know. Yeah, it is every all the chop wood, carry water, yeah. right? It is just all the extra administrivia that needs to be done to make the SIG work or the project work. Yeah. Um, and then it's the technical contribution side, which is how do I get commit bit, right? Yeah. Um, and we have, we want to combine it and have roles that acknowledge both. Um, cause we have roles where some people want to be able to contribute to the project purely from a project management standpoint. Yeah. Um, for example, and they actually don't want commitment. They just want to be able to help in different ways. And I think we need to be able to have roles that work with that. Um, I, I have worked with a number of people who make projects work, who will never make a technical decision on the project ever, but who offload 80% of my work. Mm, I see. And our contribution ladder needs to carve out recognize and respect their role on the project so kind of like a project or program manager type of type of role or yeah or maybe you know release manager i mean it, you know it, it depends how many people you have how many what hats you need to like spell out right and how many when you have four people the hats, you, you don't have a lot, right? Yeah. When you have 600 or 4,000, you get to have many hats yeah. and let people have very well-defined ones, right? Um, so but. maybe that means for the template, for the template site or the template readme's or whatever it is, Yeah. maybe that means suggesting some roles, but also at the same time saying, hey, these roles might not be a separate person if your project is 50 oh. people, but we think these are really important to consider for any project. Yeah, and this is also why when we laid these out here that mm -hmm. we were trying to give people a wider variety of not all like feature code specific mm -hmm. things as well. To, to again, just try to plant this seed, this idea that there's a lot of things that falls on the shoulders of people who are running a project. And there's many ways that people can contribute to, mm -hmm. to help shoulder that burden. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you want them to help with it, you need to recognize it. Yeah. You need to call out for it. You need to ask for help for it. And you need to recognize it when they do it. Yeah. So, yeah. This is going to be like a theme that we need to like put breadcrumbs through and pepper throughout all of our, our documents that we value it. And um, yeah, we value it. Boom. <laughs> yeah. And that you get rewarded slash recognized for it. Yeah, you'll get, you'll get recognized. You'll get the title. You'll get standing in the project. Yeah. You know. I mean, another thing is 
Oh yeah, you put communication, social media, blog posts. I was gonna say yeah. marketing, but that's pretty much the same. So never mind. I call out marketing, but then I felt that that was a really difficult term to understand the tasks behind. Mm -hmm. So we tried to we tried to take that and split it into the tasks yeah. instead of the role. Does that make sense? Oh yeah. The role is maybe marketing. But what are the tasks behind it that they would be contributing? Yeah, definitely. Um, so that's why this originally was the word marketing. Cool. Uh, okay. So if you have more, there's nothing wrong with having more uh, ways to contribute, by the way. Um, these were just what we've thought of so far. I can maybe say like CI, CD, help. Oh, or gosh, something. yes. Yeah. I don't know how to say that the best way. But... Yeah, no, it's all the underlying processes that make the project run. Yeah. <laughs> That's such yeah, an annoying one. Builds, yeah. Right? Oh, sorry. That, oh, you're suggesting. You can edit. Yeah. That's fine if you want to. I'm on my G Suite account, so I can't edit. Sorry. No, that's fine. Maybe I can switch. This will blow everything up, maybe? Will this? There we go. Oh. That's fine. You can be the anonymous beaver. That's yeah, fine. I'm just going to stay. It's like it wants me to sign in now. I don't know. It's a whole that's, thing. It's good. No, that's a great suggestion. I love it. That's definitely um, another way to contribute. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I think there's tons more probably, but it might be project specific or I don't know. Maybe yeah. these things, it's like what you said, if it's 50 people, someone probably can do builds and X, whatever other X thing, or they can do new features and builds or whatever it is. So maybe, maybe these are good suggestions, but not necessarily required. I, I don't know. I'm going to add one more release management. Mm -hmm. I guess they are required. They're just not required to have one different person for each thing. Yeah, yeah. And some of this is, um, you know, we're making the template first, but next to this is going to be a guide that talks a lot more about this and gives people some new ways to think about how would you go about uh, figuring out what roles make sense for your project. Ah, uh, I gotcha. You know, like Porter's really small. Maybe we have five people. We don't really have, yeah. you know, 12 roles, right? But yeah. as we grow, we should have in our mind, we may get a new contributor who could do just one of these roles for us. And mm -hmm. it would it would help us immensely. So we shouldn't rule it out, right? Yeah. Um, but at the moment, I may be wearing, you know, four of the five roles mm -hmm. all yeah. at once, you know. Okay, sorry, we, I kind of like got stuck on this. Um, <laughs> I mean, this is an important thing for sure. Yeah, yeah, so that's that. Okay. And then we want, to link to come to our meetings again, because other ways, not everything happens through GitHub, right? So we want to tell them just come to our meetings or contact us if they have other ways that they think they could help us. Right. Okay, we have come to our meetings. And then one second, I'm gonna um, unbullet point that through the magic. <laughs> the magic of something, Google. Yeah. There we go. Cool. And then I added this, I stole it from Athens, um, about how to claim it. Yeah, I don't know a better way than, than that. But. I want to keep it as low-key as possible, but I just, everyone always asks me that. Yeah. I want to work on it. I can't assign it to myself. How do I just say I want to work on it? And really, like, let's not overthink it. Yeah. I, I want to work on it. Cause, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I added this, how to ask for help. I figured putting it right next to finding an issue. Um, and I just want to give them like, 
please just replace this, which I would ever want you do. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, whatever. Some people do everything through GitHub, but if you have other ways to ask for help, then just tell people how to ask for help. Does this include if you don't know, if you want to work on a thing, but you don't know what? Good question. Uh, no, it, it, right now it doesn't, but like, I feel like that's almost a separate thing. Um, mm -hmm. Let's just call that out separately because it always is. A... Yeah, it's like the number one thing. It is. Um, I don't know if that should go here or should, I think it probably goes to the finding an issue actually. Oh, find an issue, yeah. But, um, <laughs> sorry, it's my finger that's right over the uh, explanation point. That's messed up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so hard to hit. Is um, it something serious? I almost cut off my finger this weekend. Oh no. But it grosses me out, so I don't, I'm not talking about it. Okay, never mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's fine. It doesn't hurt anymore. Good. Can't be too serious then. It's icky. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> and now that's recorded. <laughs> For the record, her finger is fine. It is not icky. <laughs> Good. Okay. Um, if you can't find a single link issue. Um... Oh, I have an idea. Go. I'll oh, do you it. want to type it instead? Uh, sure. Yeah. Okay. But you can't, but you don't know where to start or can't find a pseudo issue. Yeah. Say how you want folks to reach out. Uh, say how people can reach out to you for help finding something to work on. Um. That, that happens all the time. Just, gosh. Yeah. I'll delete my part. And then I can delete this, I think. Yeah. It's just inevitable. Yeah. Especially, I think, in the Kubernetes world, um, because a lot of people do it for work, and yeah. their boss tells them to, and they might just not be familiar with the project or tech or whatever. Well, I mean, because like the, the flip side of this, um, so I, I just opened an issue. Uh, I'm going to take the good first issue guidance that I wrote for Kubernetes, hmm. which is how to, as a maintainer, label issues. Mm -hmm. what, what makes a good first issue? What makes a good help wanted? But I want to update it with the how to make it not a huge burden to, to make those issues and find them and label them and like oh I see backfill all this info that usually they need that you don't have when you come up with the issue to begin with mm -hmm. um, that Jennifer and I have been coming up with um, so I want to take this and add it um, but you know it's a process you don't always stay on top of that right. So people come to your project and you may not have any at the moment when they come to your project. And so they're just going to come to you and be like, there aren't any help. Which one should I work on? You know, I mean, sometimes it's just as simple as that. You didn't have maybe, time. Maybe we should call that out here. Like sometimes there won't be any issues with these labels. Yeah. Uh, there is likely still something for you to work on. Something like that, maybe? Yes. I think that's good. Yeah. 
We can probably make that more succinct, but yeah, maybe a start probably. I think um, for now, let's just focus on getting the content and not worry about tone or verbosity or anything like that. We can, mm -hmm. we need to sound serious later. Yeah. Not very serious. We're serious business people. All right. We do business. We do business all the time. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Trying to be good because it's recorded. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. To everyone watching, we are serious business people. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to skip over the next one because I didn't write any content for you yet, but I did write content for some other things here. Okay. Uh, we had a section we wanted to do about signing your commits. Uh, okay. So I gave them options because. I would say everything in the CNCF with the exception of Kubernetes does DCO. Okay. So I put that first and it did something really generic that just explains how to do DCO. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then otherwise I have a really short one that just says we require you to have signed our CLA and then ask them to either explain it or link to the explanation for the CLA here. Okay. Um, but otherwise, I expect most people will just customize it and keep the DCO part. So is the DCO, do you just have to do one of these? Yeah. Okay. And customize, okay. Oh man, I think I have to sign out and sign back in to this meeting because my f screen is flickering cra oh. like crazy. I'll be okay. right back. <laughs> better uh we'll see i think so okay um there isn't anything to customize on the dco section um it's just the cla that i mean i don't i'm not familiar with all of the the projects i just know that kubernetes is, is a little bit of the different one using a cla and that mm -hmm. everyone is encouraged to use dcos in the cncf cool um, so I just kept it brief because I don't really know what other than we just want them to, to say what the process is. Cool. And the process is going to be different depending on the CLA. Yeah. Um, and then I wrote a pull request checklist. Okay. Uh, these are all the checks that a pull request must pass before it can be merged. We recommend that you validate these locally before you submit your pull request so that your pull request is more likely to be merged quickly. Mm, okay. Can I make a few? Yeah, edits please. Today? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, when you submit your pull request or you push your commits to it, um, our CI CD systems will uh, run some automated checks. Is that right? Is that the expectation that there well, will be? Some, like... some of these are going to be manual and some of these will be automated. Okay. It, it's so... a combination of both. So for example, we want people to just know what is what their PR is going to be evaluated against. Okay. So, okay. So the PR might pass the CI CD stuff, but there's still some stuff that might. Yeah. So if okay. you look down, um, my still sharing, like, did you write tests? Yeah. That's something that will kick your PR back for, but it won't have failed. Yeah. The, the pull request build. 
um, did you write documentation because maybe you added a new feature will kick your pull request back. Yeah. So ideally you should write it up front so okay. that your PR goes more smoothly. Okay. So let me adjust this. Okay. Um, when you, uh, let's see, we would like, are uh, we require that your PR passes these checks, but we have more criteria than just that before we can accept and merge it. These are all the so um, we recommend that you run these so that you uh, check the following things locally before you submit your code. Okay. Something One like thing that. is I want to change CICD because okay. I don't think that's a term that everyone knows. Okay. So how about our automated systems will run? Yeah. Okay. Automated is great. Yeah, there we go. You are. Let's Just, see. Yeah. Okay. We require that your PR, that was the right, pull request. Yeah, we're we'll filling pull request out just to be friendly. But we also have more criteria than just that before we can accept and merge it. We recommend that you check for the following things locally before you submit your code. Um, pass this tests, run the following command to run all of the tests locally. Yeah, and the, the comment above is for them to customize what's below. Oh, okay. Because cool. this is just an example. Gotcha. Okay, I'll leave that alone then. Yeah. Uh, ELO, and I, I, let me change that. ELO is an example. Of, check. There we go. Does that make sense though? Like, yeah. Yeah. For sure. Um, so, like, one is the automated thing. What can you run locally? Yeah. Just to know, like, so you don't have to hunt down what's their Travis file going to run, right? Yeah. yeah. Help them out. But then also know what is the approver going to look for as well. Do you because, think that uh, people are always surprised, like, what? I need to, yeah. I need to have tests. I didn't yeah. know that. People are always surprised. Um, so do you think that those two lists should be split? Um, I don't think they have to be, but I, I think like that could be up to the, the person customizing it, I guess, okay. how they wanted to do it. Yeah. Um, you know, um, one thing that would be really helpful that you did in Athens was explain how to set up so you could actually run the test. Set up what? How you, because like sometimes running the test isn't easy. Oh, yeah. And I'm trying to find developer environment setup. So you have, or we have here, how to test the source code, unit integration tester, and, and so that, that should be enough. We just kind of hand wave and hope people know how to do that. I think it would be a really useful link to good examples uh, from other contributing guides for what this looks like. I think we should give them examples because yeah. I feel like I'm often not given enough information on yeah, this. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's a huge turnoff. You're like, I have to dig through the code now. 
to figure out what I need before this thing will run. I mean, I, I just had this experience where I went to contribute to a open source project and I got to the pull requests and they said, well, we want you to run the end to end test because we don't have it automated in our PR. We mm -hmm. want you to run it locally and tell us that it passed. I'm like, <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> I wasn't able to get it to work. Um, <laughs> my PR never went anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of sad. <laughs> oh, actually, here's another one though. Um, how to run the thing locally. Oh my gosh. The project? Yeah, something. Yeah. I knew there was a better word <laughs> than thing. Yeah. There you go. So, it oh it kind of goes. Yeah, that's like really important. <laughs> kind of goes hand in hand with testing too. It does and it doesn't. Because usually when you do the tests, you're running like a test framework, not yeah. the final service or command line tool or whatever it may be. Right? Yeah. Another one, I don't know how important the naming war is, but it might it might be useful to say this is what we define our or this is where you'll find our integration tests this is where you'll find our end-to-end -end tests like this is our this is the difference between the two in our project and that is just because different people expect different things when they hear integration or end-to-end -end. Do you think that goes in contributing or do you think that goes in the, like a development.md? Yeah, probably the latter. Yeah, you're right. Let's just add a comment so we remember that though. I guess probably like unit integration and end to end. I guess everyone uses it right names and like I picked integration. Some people call them functional. Some people call yeah. it system, whatever you write. Yeah. I've just seen, I've just seen so much, like so much confusion or debate over what are these things? How do they fit into our project? Yeah. So it'd be cool to have like the go fumped version of this. Like these are what our names are. Yeah. It doesn't matter what you think is right. It's just what, this is what we've defined for this project. Totally. And we're not, we're not saying what terms to use. We're just trying to say whatever the project uses. Yeah. This is how you run our tests. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. So the one part I skipped over sort of comment here. Um, right. This is the optional section. We encourage you to think about your pull request process and set expectations for contributors and reviewers. Mm -hmm. um, so let's back up, go back up to the goal for this section. How do you, how does the project stay on top of pull requests? Mm -hmm. the PR timeline sets expectations for maintainers and authors on when you would ping, etc. Um, so like Porter has one, I don't know, contributing. Um, and so we have, we have a couple things. One, we have how to get your pull request reviewed fast. And we tell people a couple different tips, like use draft PRs, uh, limit your PR to a single pat task, don't refactor and do the thing at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, grouping commits, uh, make your changes and new commits. Cause you know, if you just keep amending the same commit, it's really hard to review. Mm -hmm. We talk about follow on PRs and then we also have this, which is like the PR timeline. Mm, I see. And we tell people like you make it, you submit it up. Uh, somebody assigns themselves so that you know that they're on it. We tell people three days. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, If no one assigns themselves after three days, ping. And we tell people how to ping. Um, So that, that last sentence right after ping, I think that should be surfaced at the top to just build a little empathy. <laughs> like that's really, I mean, you know how it is. It's, this is asynchronous. There's no faces or voices involved. Yeah. So just have people, just to have people have the expectation that, Hey, we're humans, you know, we're trying, but we have day jobs. We have lives. Yeah. We get busy. We have to go on. You know, we have to rest that just all of that just to put a human element into this whole section. Yeah. Maybe even the previous section as well, or instead, I don't know. Yeah. Um, Agreed. Um, And then we kind of explain like the types of feedback you can get and how to put some context on it. Like, It's okay to ask, do I have to make the change? (laughs) Um, And again, saying it's okay to bump and ask if you don't hear back. And then letting you know that if you want to rebase and deal with your own commits, you can let people, otherwise they'll squash it for you. And then how to get get your code commits done. Cool. That Um, last part is awesome. So something like this, um, that obviously the project customizes to what their thing is, you know, Mm -hmm. we say three business days because Carol's paid to do that. Uh, Um, you know, like people can do whatever they want, but like something like this to get people thinking about it. I think you should link to this or copy this. Yeah, either link to it or copy it in because it's hard to know how to say these things without uh, sounding crappy, I guess. Do you think there's anything that we can put in the template or do you just want to link to it and maybe another example or I don't know many examples like this, to be honest, this is like This is what I personally wanted, so I wrote it. Yeah, I don't know any of the other examples either. Um, let's see. I think the key things for me as a maintainer, I see it from the maintainer and from the contributor viewpoint. So for me as the maintainer, being able to figure out if they're ready for a review is big. Um, definitely the single task thing is big. Um, and then setting that expectation of when I'll be able to get to it. Definitely setting an expectation that I'm a human being. Uh, and I, I guess those are the top things. There's, there's other, obviously, but if I had to choose just a few, that would be the ones. Can we? Okay, wait, 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 wait. Oh, I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. I'm trying to see what you just said. <laughs> Let me, I think I can write it in somewhere. Okay. Um, yeah, here it is, the pull request timeline. Let me go up, up, up. Where are you? Yeah. Okay, so I want to put this, because what you said is what I love. Use this to set expectations for both reviewers and contributors. Yeah. Yeah. And but then you had a lot more. Yeah, let me try to write this here. Uh, okay, so for reviewers, um, when the PR is ready for review when um, the contributor uh, should expect um, initial review and or uh, actually when to expect follow 
up reviews when how to ping. Um, can you pull up the Porter one again? Yeah. Um, da, da, da. Oh, scroll down. Yeah, I think that was it. Oh yeah, and then telling contributors that you are a human <laughs> and things happen. <laughs> These aren't I'm set in stone. It's on best effort. Something like that. Contributors. I think that's how you spell it. So four contributors. Um, so this one is like kind of the same how to indicate work in progress versus ready to review, how to handle orphan PRs that you can't seem to get reviewed, how to handle, uh, how to handle follow-up PRs, how to keep your PRs small and focused. I think that would be a good four. Yeah. Because I did four for the reviewers and I'll just keep it to four for contributors also. Yeah. So so let's not use the word orphan, but we we'll use oh, yeah. uh, like uh, stock PRs. Um, yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. Follow up PRs and issues. Um, how do you, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, follow up issues. Maybe something about do you need to have an issue before you submit any kind of PR or is it okay to not? Yeah, yeah. Um, so we put that in our contributing guide, and a number of other contributing guides put that in theirs as well that they. As an example, uh, usually, like you'll see something like this. Mm -hmm. Like it's okay for tiny things, but if there's anything where it's like it could be misunderstood, what's the motivation or what's the solution? There mm -hmm. needs to be an issue first. We need to agree upon the solution first, mm -hmm. or the need for the fix. Yeah. Um. Also, we were gonna put that, it's in the um, it's in the issue template that we're gonna add. Oh, cool. So it's gonna say that when they open the PR. Cool. Like, let me show you. Uh, GitHub. Oh, wait. It's a pull request template. Nice. So we'll like prompt them. We can prompt them and we, we can be very explicit here. Like it, you've got to tell us what, what issue you're closing mm -hmm. unless it's, you know, meet some criteria. So we can be more explicit than this actually. Um, so that may be helpful too. Nice. Okay. I suppose maybe the project for whatever reason doesn't care and they just don't, they just want PRs and have to have the discussion in the PR. Yeah, I don't think it has to be in the contributing guide. Um, it's like a must have, mm, you yeah. know? Yeah. I think that's something people could customize and decide to have or not. Um, cool. Because some people don't care. <laughs> yeah. Some I'm people like, do. Give us your code and that's all we care about. Because some people have no problem just closing a PR. But oh, well, that's a good point time. right there, too. Like, for contributors, 
should you feel bad if, <laughs> if your PR gets closed? And then for reviewers, like, is it okay to just close it? What should you put in a comment? Something like that to set kind of expectations, maybe to prevent hurt feelings. So this is the pull request timeline. It's saying when you interact with our project, this is what you can expect. Mm. It's not a guide for how to run a PR though. Oh, okay. I got you. We will have a guide <laughs> okay. about how to do a kind pull request. Oh, cool. All right. In the future. And that, that's what something our working group will do. Coolio. You know what I mean? But yeah. it, won't, it won't be in the contributing guide itself. So it'll be one that's just for reviewers. Yeah. Basically. Okay. It'll talk about how to, how we expect, what's our, our like base level of like, in order to be a reviewer on this project, this is what we expect out of you. Um, It'd probably be nice still to tell contributors, hey, there are a few kind of general cases where we might close your PR. We'll make sure to tell you why, but don't feel... Like we're not doing it as a personal insult to you. We're doing it for reason X so that the project stays healthy or I don't know, whatever it is, if, if in the project it becomes a thing that maintainers find they have to close PRs maybe. Do you think that goes in the contributing guide or? I don't know. It's just a thing as a reviewer, I've, I have feels because there have been times where PRs have been kind of like they haven't been stuck, but they've just been kind of dragging along and it's clear the contributor's not into it anymore. Yeah, I've got one of those right now. (laughs) Yeah, right. So it's like it would be better for everyone, honestly, if the contributor was left off the hook or was let off the hook. Yep. And it would free up the reviewer's time. Yeah. I still well, think that would be better in the guide, though, than in the contributing. The guide. Oh, okay. You know I what see. I mean? The, yeah, contr- yeah. The, the document where we have a lot more space, where we're almost training and saying, hey, you just got promoted to being a reviewer. Here's some advice. Oh, yeah. And we've tricked you into reading. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Oh yeah. For, I get it. Whereas the, this document is going to be read mostly by a new contributor. And I don't know if we want them reading a thing that say, we're probably going to, we may close your PR. <laughs> Welcome now. <laughs> this yeah. is real. Yeah. So like Porter, for example, is something that says this just for reviewers. And it says like how to review a PR here's just some values you need to keep in your head Mm -hmm. that you can use to like judge how to make decisions yeah and whatever and then like what are our merge requirements (laughs) gee carol where did you get your merge requirements from (laughs) Um, yeah that's where i stole it from for our doc so do is this a document that anyone in the community should read Oh no. I, okay. So is there a document that anyone in the community who just wants to write some code or do some docs would read? This is just for people who have reviewer rights. I mean, yeah. anyone can read it, obviously. You can. I can. Anybody. Yeah. It's just people who can merge PRs mm-hmm. on order. Yeah. Which is a very small group. But. So, oh, so you have a contributing.md and that is what everyone should read. If you're a contributor. Okay. And then if you were a reviewer, we have a reviewing.md. So if, if you can't meet these, you will no longer be a, yeah. <laughs> you'll lose commit fit. 
and to be honest, like the things, the things in here that matter is respecting people's time. And for example, um, be kind. Mm -hmm. Like if you can't be kind, you can't stay on as a reviewer. Yeah. So someone who is a contributor can read this and go, you're not being kind. You're not respecting my time. You're not whatever. Yeah. You know. Okay. You are asking me to rewrite it in your style. You are yeah. asking me to optimize for performance, but without giving me, you know, whatever, you know, it can, it can be used in multiple ways. I see. Cool. We don't, we're not a big enough project yet to need this, but it can be used to prevent someone who, for no reason we could prevent them from becoming an, a, a reviewer, but it then becomes apparent as a reviewer that they're not suitable. They're not helping to keep an inclusive community. Yeah. We can point to how they're being a reviewer against this document and then knock them back down to at least contributor, if not, not on the project at all. Mm -hmm. I gotcha. Because some of these are very hard to, to do if you don't actually have the same values. You can't give lip service to some of these, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I totally get that. Yeah. I misunderstood this, who this document was for. Sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, I, I totally get it. But now I understand like who should, like who you would give this document to. Yeah. It prevents people from weaponizing our contributing ladder against us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Okay. That's the hope. So that is the reviewing doc. And you mentioned a contributing doc. And that would that be for, is that for just anyone who comes to the project and wants to write code? So this is the, this template right here is the contributing doc, right? Yeah. Yeah. So if you are a contributor, this is what you must follow. Mm-hmm and it explains what to expect and what you must do in order to be allowed to contribute. And then it's alternate for people who have the reviewing role is that other doc. Okay. So should we, should we have this for reviewer section here? <coughs> um, I think, what you've done is really great because when we think about uh, here, uh, the life of the pull request, we didn't want to take all of this, right? Mm -hmm. We wanted to somehow generalize what were things that you should think about if you wanted to write something similar. Okay. And and uh, these are things that you would have to think about. Okay. As a contributor, so, okay. Yeah. So I think that from a reviewer standpoint, what would you want to think about? As a contributor, what would you want to think about? Yeah. If you can articulate some of these things, any of these things, please write it down in your contributing guide. Uh, okay. I think I get it. Okay. Yeah, I think I get it enough. Okay, we, I'm not explaining this well. We need to put some more words here. Um, I have a feeling you are, and I'm just not. I'm dense right okay. now. Um, I think we've gone over at this point. I'm sorry, we have 15 minutes. Um, yeah, I got I'll, I'll work on adding the introductory text for this and kind of set up the questions here. Like these are, this is a, a, like a prompt. Yeah. for you to go through an exercise and after you've gone through this exercise you can create a timeline for your own project mm -hmm. how's that sound yeah it sounds okay. good so I'll, I'll, just... I'll, so I'll i'll tweak that so that can that i put something better what we're doing here okay is it okay if i put something here of course 
Okay. SDA off is great. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe just that to really clarify, like we don't yeah. expect this, but try to do something like this. Yeah. So I think we're doing really well here on our contributing guide. Um, I think we have two more things um, and then we'll have hit all our topics. So looking good. Uh, I'll try to get that template PR done or template repo nice. so that we can get this in there. Um, okay. And then maybe we can get uh, well, a couple more eyes on it and see what people think. Try to wordsmith a little bit more now that we've got like the main concepts laid down. Cool. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you joined our working group. This yeah, this is really nice to have this, have this, uh, I don't know, vibe, effort, um, a big, in a big organization. Haven't really seen this ever before. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna immediately use this repo template to like make all my new repos. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. I'm gonna pull stuff to from here to Athens. It's gonna help a lot for many things. It's gonna be good. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you for your time. Sorry we went over. Thank you. This was great. Later. Later. <laughs>